How to enlarge images using artificial intelligence. Hey guys, Kerry Hawkins here with another Vectormade.com tutorial. And in today's tutorial, we're going to talk about using AI to help enlarge images that have a low resolution or low clarity. Now, this is a uh, software that I picked up probably a year ago or so, um, and they recently made some additions uh, that it made it even better. But I use this on a regular basis, and I wanted to share this with you as I think Adobe's um, AI stuff that they implemented in their latest um, editions of Illustrator and Photoshop, I think it sucks. I think it's terrible. It's worthless. Like, just throw it away. Don't ever use it. It's terrible. It's laughable. If you want a good laugh, go ahead and use it. <laughs> but if you actually want to have something that you can use with your clients, then this software by Topaz, Gigapixel AI, is for you. I think it costs $100, somewhere around there. I, like I said, I probably use it on average every day. Um, so let me just jump in here real quick and show you what it does. Um, let me zoom in real quick. And on the left side, on the left side is going to be the original image quality. And on the right side, is going to be the uh, AI enhancement. And you can take this uh, middle slider and go back and forth and see. So as you can see, there's there's almost no uh, usability in this for any sort of print job, right? There's just what you can see, the pixelation, anti-aliasing. You can see all kinds of nasty artifacts. But when I when I run this through my filter, though it's not perfect, it looks really good. Um, so much better that like you can actually use this in print, right? Now, it wouldn't fool somebody into thinking that it was 100% real at, at a really close distance. But if you're going to put this, let's say, on a, uh, on a window for like a liquor store, which is what I use this for, um, then you, can, you could totally get by with this. And I want to show you down here the, uh, the texture quality on the ribbon. Check this out. Looks terrible, but when you run it through the filter, it actually looks serviceable. You know, it's got this nice, rich texture of a ribbon. Same thing goes for this kind of glass area. As you'll see, it's just very fu fuzzy, pixelated, nasty. But here you kind of catch a lot of this um, nuance of the sheen, right? So this AI program just builds all that in. And what you can do over here is decide how much of a scale you want. <clears throat> so typically I do six times uh, whatever this normally was just to give me like the biggest um, most usable file especially when I'm working on these window graphics that they're, they're gonna be like you know 30 to 40 inches wide by 75 80 100 inches tall something like that I'll need something that's fairly big <clears throat> and then in over here you've kind of got this um, lightning settings I guess is what what you would call it these are just kind of like automated selling settings that uh, the AI program will use. And I find that they're pretty good most of the time. Um, and before I get to that, really, I should tell, talk about these AI models. So the HQ is the most recent one that they uh, added in maybe a few months back. And I use that one almost exclusively now. It's easily the best. Every now and then I might use one of these others, but I mean like 95% of the time I just go to HQ. Before that, I would maybe go between art and CG, sometimes standard, sometimes low res, um, and hardly ever use these two. If you wanted to see a comparison, this just gives you the side, the split view right here. So I have a side by side original to whatever it is I'm filtering with, whichever settings. Over here is going to be um, a, a side by side view with a couple different options if you wanted to. Um, you'd have the original over here and then your. Um, your uh, filter here. And then you've got this option, which is a comparison view, which will just show you um, different settings. So this upper left is HQ, upper right is very compressed, up, uh, lower right is standard, and, uh, and this one, let's just change it to lines real quick. So as you can see, lines is a little bit rougher than the others. They say that that's best for like things with uh, brick in it, like a, or buildings. Anything that's got like straight lines to it that lines is good for, but I haven't found that to be the case now that they have HQ. As you can see, HQ is by far the best of these. Um, and so I end up just going with that one most of the time. <clears throat> um, you can also 
uh, if you don't want to use these lightning settings, you can come in and kind of doctor it up however you want. And so like, let's say bump suppress noise all the way up. See, it's a little bit cleaner, but also kind of loses some of the uh, texture as you get over here into the shadow. So actually bringing that back down makes a little bit more sense. If you, you could bring it all the way down and have a, a decent amount of noise and that has a lot of texture. Um, remove blur kind of does something similar to, you'll just notice that the higher up it goes, the crisper it is, the lower it is, the more of a blur there might be. But honestly, I usually can't tell a whole lot of difference between those. I just kind of keep it on this setting unless there's something obvious that's not good in the picture, then I might mess with these. Face recovery is another one. Actually, you don't need that on for here, um, but you will want face recovery on uh, if there are faces in the image, and I'll show you that one in just a sec. Here's a good example of a client that sent me an image uh, that I, I had to use this on like banners and such, and I could not use it as it was because the quality was so poor. Let me just zoom in here so you can see. She's just she's just utterly pixelated, right? You, you can't use this for print. So when I run it through, put face recognition on, and maybe just use wherever it is. We'll see, actually, I remember this one was a little bit higher. Let's go with 80 and see how that goes. I'll just use the regular settings. We'll do it on HQ and let the automatic settings go and just see what this does to her face. Boom. Now it's not perfect, but good grief. She's recognizable, she's human, her eyes look right. A little bit of funkiness in the teeth maybe, but you know, here's what the original looked like. You can't even tell any definition and now we can actually tell that she has teeth. So again, it would be better if you could get a higher resolution original from whoever made this. But if you can't, and this is all you're given, this is a great way to, um, you know, make it work where otherwise it just wouldn't. And I mean, this, this was never a thing. Back in the day when people would say, can you enlarge and enhance? I'd say, no, <laughs> that's only for shows like NCIS and stuff like that. Uh, crime, crime scene investigation uh, shows. But now you actually can, to a certain extent, enlarge these things. Let me just kind of show you what this does to, you know, the middle here. So there you've got this DC logo. And if we do a filter on it, it looks pretty good, serviceable. Again, it's got a few areas that are added here and you could probably go in here and um, bump the settings up or down. Uh, another thing is maybe looking at her skin texture here, you'll see that it kind of gives her a little bit of like peach fuzz or something on her skin, which maybe you don't want. And maybe we could get rid of that if we suppress some of this, maybe fix compression, remove some blur. Yeah, see there we just cleaned it up a little bit. So it looks a little bit better and it might look better for this DC as well. Let's just see. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. I, I think you'd still have to go in in Photoshop and maybe touch this up, touch that up a little bit. But you know, again, it's a serviceable, look at her fingers. They look so much better than they do here. You know, it's a serviceable uh, end product that you just didn't have a second ago. You know, there was nothing usable about this and now all of a sudden you could probably use it. I don't really like her vein right there. That looks a little funky. But again, you could probably do uh, a couple different passes. Her skin looks actually pretty realistic right here. I like that. You could do a couple different passes with this on different settings, go into Photoshop and, you know, block this part out on one of the layers and use another one, uh, a different setting altogether for something that maybe would give you a little bit better hand. Although I don't think that looks terrible. And honestly, you probably wouldn't notice it when it's in print. But, you know, the quality on this is really good. It's, it's actually usable. And not everything is perfect. As you can see, her hair's a little funky over here. Um, but as far as AI upscaling goes for $100, and that's it, then you get upgrades for free, at least for now you do. Um, I think this is well worth the investment. Um, I'll even show you, let's just see if we can open up something. If I've got like a texture, here you go. Let's open up this uh, brick texture real quick and just see what it does. Look at that. Here's what it originally looked like. And if we did 6X, HQ, let's just do regular settings, turn face off, um, automatic settings. Look at the quality of that. You can use this. You could not use this before. Now you can use it. So I find it's especially effective with anything that's got texture in it. 
because it's not going to be like specifics anyway. You don't need to worry about fingers or faces or hair. You just want the overall texture to be there. And on these, on these low texture uh, images like this, you can really bring them in and, and pull out a lot of extra detail that just wasn't there. So anyway, guys, that is my video, and that's my those are my thoughts on AI. Let me know in the comments section down below what you've been using AI for. Have you have you found another software that you like? Do you actually like the <laughs> laughably bad stuff that's in Adobe Suite right now? If you do, hey, disagree with me. I'd love to see it in the comments below, and I will get to those comments as they come in. But anyway, that's it for me. Um, we will see you guys in the next video.